They're creepy, they're scary, they're disease-ridden, and they will suck your blood. Okay, if you were thinking about Dracula's babies from Van Helsing, then yes. But real bats are quite the opposite. And let me tell you why these flying mammals are some of the coolest and misunderstood animals there are. Bats are in the order Chiroptera, which is the second largest order of mammals, the first being rodents. The word Chiroptera derives from the Greek words hand wing. If you were to compare their arms to ours, there's a lot of similarities. Within Chiroptera, there are over 1,400 species of bats. That's a quarter of all mammal species in the world. And this order is split into two suborders, the Megachiroptera, or Old World Fruit Bats, and the Microchiroptera, or Microbats. Of all the species of bats, 23 are assessed as critically endangered, 85 species are endangered, and 113 are considered vulnerable. The suborder Megachiroptera only has one family of flying foxes and old world fruit bats. These are the largest of bat species, like the golden crowned flying fox, which has a wingspan of nearly six feet. These megabats, since their diet consists of many types of fruits, are great at dispersing seeds. In fact, they can reforest an area after a wildfire or a forest clearing with the seeds in their feces, which is some of the world's richest fertilizer. But more on that in a minute. Not all megabats are, well, mega or large. In fact, there's an entire genus of megachiroptera that are called the pygmy fruit bats. The remaining 17 families of bats belong in the suborder microchiroptera, the microbats. These are small to medium-sized bats, which includes the smallest of all bat species, the bumblebee bat. These bats have a wide variety of diets, but a majority of microbats feed primarily on insects. Here in the United States, these insectivorous bats save farmers $23 billion a year by reducing crop damage from pests like the corn earworm and decreasing the need for pesticides. These pest-eating machines can eat up to a half of their body weight a night, and pregnant females can eat up to 100% of their body weight. That's a lot of insects for just one bat, and that includes mosquitoes. Now let's travel to Bracken Cave, just outside of San Antonio, Texas. This cave is the world's largest bat maternity colony. Over 15 million Mexican free-tailed bats come to Bracken Cave every year to give birth to their young. These baby bats are called pups, and each female only has one pup. Each evening, these mothers leave the cave to feed on insects. Over 140 tons of insects a night. And then they return to feed their pups. They can find their own pup in the mass swarms of pups by using spatial memory, vocalizations, and their scent. How these bats find such small prey is fascinating. They use something called echolocation. It's kind of like a submarine sonar. Insectivorous bats emit small vocalizations and those sounds bounce off of all of the objects in front of the bat, including their insects. Bats can sense how big and how far the object is just by listening to the bouncing sounds. Insects and fruit aren't the only thing that's on the menu for bats. Do you like sushi? Well, the fish eating myotis does. They and a few other species of bat feed on fish and crustaceans. Some bats even feed on nectar and are the primary pollinators for certain plants. The agave plant and the Saharo cactus in the American Southwest and Central America depend on bats like the lesser long-nosed bat for pollination. These bats have a specialized tongue that's as long as their body is. It's designed for this specific food source. All of this information just shows how important bats are to us and the environment. They're nature's pest control, which helps our farmers. They're forest planners. 
and they're pollinators. But they are in trouble. Much like most animal species on Earth, they face many difficulties. Habitat destruction is the number one cause of all biodiversity loss, and bats are included in that statistic. Developing natural areas where bats roost and feed is a major problem for bats. Wind turbines in the wind industry are another non-natural threat to bats. Impacts on wind turbines and the sudden air pressure changes around the bat from the rotor spinning kill more than 650,000 bats each year in North America. Heat waves, extreme weather events, drought, and seasons staying warmer for longer also affect bat populations, especially migratory bats. When fall and summer weather lasts longer in the season, it prolongs their migration. And since their primary food source is insects, when the cold weather does come, there is no more food for them and it's too late for them to move on. So what happens to all those insects that are consumed? Well, just like you and me, the waste products are, well, dumped. Bat poo is called guano and it is a very rich fertilizer for plants. Guano mining is a huge and growing industry. From agricultural fertilizers to backyard gardeners, this rich fertilizer will help your yields. But mining for it disrupts bat colonies, forcing them out of their roosts in maternity colonies like Bracken Cave. Other problems that bats face are the illegal wildlife trade, hunting for their meat and being consumed for the traditional medicine beliefs in Asia, and even being killed because of myths like being vampires or superstitions. Well, the fact is, only three bat species feed on blood. The common vampire bat, the hairy-legged vampire bat, and the white-winged vampire bat. These are the only species that feed on blood. If one bites you, which is very uncommon, you will not become a vampire. Sorry, Dracula. I feel no love. Here in North America, bats are facing a new danger since 2006. The introduction of a fungal disease called white nose syndrome. This fungus has killed around 90% of the populations of northern long-eared bats, little brown bats, and the tricolored bat and it has been reported to affect 12 species in total since its introduction in 2006. It is estimated to have killed 7 million bats in total. White nose syndrome affects hibernating bats and over half of the 47 species in North America hibernate. This fungus grows on the bat's face, hence its name, as well as on the ears and wings and irritates a hibernating bat awake. Once it's awake, it will burn through its fat reserves that was stored for hibernation. And in the winter, there are no insects flying around for them to replenish that energy that they use. Since bats hibernate together in caves and mines, in close proximity of one another, the fungus is easily spread from bat to bat. Whole colonies can and have been wiped out. If you would like to help bats, there are a few things that you can do. The best way to help bats is to help educate people about one of the most important, misunderstood animals there is, but there are some other ways you can help them too. You can turn your outside lights off at night. Lights can deter bats, and turning off lights will give you an opportunity to observe them in your own yard. If you have a dead or dying tree that isn't causing any safety issues, just leave it. Bats use these trees as roosts. You can plant native plants in your yard. These plants will be the food sources for insects that will feed and attract bats. Along with planting these plants, minimize your use of pesticides. If you are trying to attract and feed bats, you don't want to poison their dinner. A single bat can consume up to 3,000 insects a night. If you have a location, you can set up a bat box. These are similar to birdhouses that give bats a place to roost. And a big way you can help is to donate to organizations like Bat Conservation International. Well, I hope you learned something today. Until next time, keep learning, keep discovering.